Okay, so you can see in here, they've plasterboarded all the ceiling that's been done. Uh, they're starting to paint the walls. There was a bit of a smell, or possibly are gonna be a smell, uh, mainly in that corner, but they've cleaned them all first. Um, they're now painting it. I think it's gonna make it a much brighter space. Need an epic session of uh, three plasters coming in to skim the ceiling, and then we'll paint that white to brighten it up as well. Um, so I've pulled this out. The machines are getting moved left and right and everywhere so they can get in with their towers. I've pulled this out because I've got this really pressing job that needs to be delivered in three weeks, um, or maybe four. Uh, got to do a resin pour, which is over there. We're doing it the weekend. It's Friday today, so the, no one will be in at the weekend. There's no chance of dust falling. I clear this off. Temporary pour table with my sheet of aluminium. Uh, under there for cooling and it's nice and cool in here. So if you've seen some of my other videos, you'll know that I've, on the sapwood, I usually use Smith's Penetrating Resin. But let's say you're kind of quite late in the game, it's um, really getting near the finish and you want to finish it off, um, you know, not wait 24 hours for the cure and that business. You can actually use this. It's like a CA or super glue and it's really thin and I'll show you what you can do. So we've got just a little bit here. It's not a big area, which is really good. I get a scotch bright and I'll just drip it on like this and then just rub it in where I think this sap would, even on the end grain, there's a little bit here. Just rub it on there, even on this end grain, just drip it on, rub it on there. It's really easy to sand off. It's very, very thin. It doesn't actually create any kind of lip and it really soaks in. So what I, I do is I don't actually put any accelerator on this for about five minutes. I'll go and sand the other piece, really let it drip in. really seep into the grain. I'm just going to let that set and then I'm just spray it with the activator just before I sand it and it will be an instant fix. Um, it'll go really deep. It's almost as good as a penetrating resin, if not as good on small areas for sure. So that is now super, super hard, ready to go. You can just keep on with your sanding. I'm on 120 grit, so I, this is the underside. I'm gonna go up to 180, then I'll start flipping it, work on the other side. And any soft spots, if I do, this is quite a real characterful piece of oak. Rather than get rid of all the color, a bit of CA glue, extra thin, it's really, really good. Okay, so you're gonna see me working on this. You're gonna see me filling um, different cracks and voids, uh, some of the kind of nice little worm holes and the bug marks. Um, and what I tend to do is if it's a small, like a real small bug hole, worm mark, uh, I use the CA glue, the black one. Um, this is the star bond. And the reason I use the star bond with the accelerator is it doesn't uh, sort of foam in a white color. And then if it's a big crack, and again, this is sort of late in the, this is a kitchen island, it's quite late in the day. I don't want to be pouring resin on this and then waiting uh, 24 hours or more to cure and then knock it back. Plus I'm on about 180 grit by this stage. This stuff sounds really easy, as does this. This you would apply, I'll show you a video, this you'll apply, put your um, aluminium heat sink on it and then you just slice it off and carry on working. So if it's a big crack, I would definitely go with that. I always use the black on a character piece like this. And if it's a small hole, I'll show you these. I'll come in here, I'll put some of this on like that, wait a second, come back to it all in a second. It's quite quick. I mean, it's still time consuming, but it is quite quick. Just find all the little holes. They look really cool when they've been filled. Loads of character, it's a little one there. That's it, and then just hit it with that. And that's it done. You can sand that immediately. So super quick and you get a really, really good result instantly. As I say, bigger stuff, I'll definitely use the hot um, melt gun, but the real minute stuff, this is the fastest thing I've ever found. Okay, so this is on the underside and you can see here, this is just slightly, maybe you do super glue on here, but it's slightly too big. Really quick to use the hot melt gun. Just put that in there and then get your heat sink, push it down.
And then in one nice smooth action, just cut that off. Almost no sanding needed, but we'll just give it a quick sand. Just a slightly bigger hole, um, or kind of defect. This is the underside, like I said, but slightly bigger. This thing does it, instant carry on working. No need for the super glue on those bigger holes. Um, and if there's like cracks and stuff, this is really good because it, it, it is, it's, there's a slight elasticity to it. So if it's, the crack's gonna move or open up, over time, this thing's going to move with it, but it is a killer strong glue as well, so it's creating a great bond. So this is going to be sanded up to, right up to a thousand grit. I'm going to use Odie's Oil Dark. It's amazing on English oak. It really pops the grain. It means we can get a real deep shine on the resin and across the join here. Unlike kind of the Wipon polys or any of these other finishes, the Odie's Dark over time, especially with English oak I've found on these sort of kind of dark and light spots, just going to get richer and deeper and warmer. Okay, this is the super penetrating oil, and I've also got some Odie's walnut uh, dye, and it's like a toy safe, food safe thing. You just put a tiny bit of dye in and a tiny bit of the penetrating. This is going to probably do the whole lot. And if you look in here, got this real kind of rich you can see it yeah real kind of rich chocolate tone now it's not going to dye the wood like a wood dye and make it go brown if you see me apply it i'm going to apply a very small amount at a time just drip it on and then really work it in and you're going to see it's really going to even up this has got loads of color differences across the grain this is going to kind of bring them together it will pop it all but it will even it out a little bit just give it a bit more color you can see the difference there and it's not a dye it's not dyed my hands my hands are completely okay it smells fantastic it's not sticky like an oil or like a a poly like a wipe on poly it goes on the resin brilliantly it doesn't leave a film so that makes the resin side easy and to speed this process up instead of using your your um scotch bright white pad you can put it on a power buffer which you're going to see me do now and then that's just going to massage it into the grain tiny amount or else you're going to spend ages wiping it off okay that's it for this one just wanted to show you a couple of the processes on the finishing um got some really cool videos coming up soon of the new shop so can't wait to show everyone that and uh, some of the new machines i've got and i've got two really cool tables i'm delivering for christmas so there'll be in-depth build for those as well now there's some links in the description. I've got Starbond link for the States. I've also got Starbond link for the UK. Uh, a couple of affiliated links if you want to buy. That always helps the channel. Till the next time, see you later. Okay, so it's the next day and all you need to do is test whether when you mark it with your fingers, when you rub it with your fingers, can you see any lines coming out, which means there's a little bit of kind of a substance on the top. So nice clean pad, terry towel in. You want it clean when it comes off and just keep going until everything is off.